Hi guys, welcome to the world of Pierre. I'm Pierre without a beard and today I want to talk about the Canon EF70-200 for wildlife photography. So uh, I bought the lens a year ago, I've been using it quite a bit and now I would like to give you my overall impression. So is 70-200 enough? Is F4 enough for wildlife photography? Let's find out. So when I started photography, I went straight for street photography. I got a 24mm lens from Canon and I spent a lot of time in the streets of Sydney and Hong Kong taking pictures of, of people walking around and, and still a, a big passion of mine. Then I tried landscape photography and then I wanted to try wildlife photography. And these are the kind of images I wanted to take. When I hear uh, National Geographic or Wildlife Photographer of the Year, uh, these are the kind of images that comes to mind. So I look at a lot of reviews on YouTube, I saw a lot of blog posts uh, about telephoto lenses and, uh, and I bought the 70-200 to from Canon. And since I didn't have a lot of budget for this lens, I couldn't afford to get a telephoto lens dedicated to wildlife photography. And at 70, you can use that for uh, portraits and also you can use that for landscape photography. So I thought it would be a good compromise to get this lens 70-200. to Water dragons in Sydney, monkeys in Bali, peacocks and horses in Tassie, seals in Naruma. I took some great shots with this lens, but if you look closely at these shots, they have one thing in common. They are pictures of animals who don't mind having humans around. 300mm for me is not enough to take a picture of a bird flying in the air. And 300mm is not enough to take the close-up of the eyes of a bird chilling uh, in a tree somewhere. And unless you're wearing a camo outfit and you're willing to wait for a long time, wait for the bird to get closer, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to do it. Well, I can't do it. Maybe you will, but I'm not very good with that. And usually I hike and I go with some friends and they don't have time for me to wait 20 minutes for a shot. So we saw this mountain goat in New Zealand when we were hiking and I really wanted to take some shots of the face. And uh, I've tried, you know, I walk really slowly like a ninja, try to get really close to it. Each time it would move a bit further and that was just the best shot I could do and I had to crop the shot. And if you zoom, you can see two things. The first one is it's not very sharp, it's a bit blurry. And the second thing is it's very noisy. So which brings me to the second point about this lens. It doesn't let enough light in. So F4 is fast enough. It, you still get quite a bit of light in this lens. But um, because it's a long lens, it's 320, uh, you need to shoot with a fast shutter speed. And there is a rule, you need to shoot um, with a shutter speed that is higher than the focal length. So this focal length is 320. So ideally you want to be shooting a 1 300 of a second or 400 of a second. And that's pretty fast, it means not a lot of light will get in. You will have to bump up the ISO and this is when you'll get a lot of noise on your images. So it works on a very bright day, there is a lot of light hitting the bird for example, uh, but then as soon as you're in the shade or you're in the forest and you're covered with trees, the image will be extremely noisy if you shoot at 1 400th of a second for example. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and this video was useful to you. Uh, if you're thinking of getting this lens no matter what, uh, for other types of photography like portrait and landscape, I would advise to get the IS version. It means that uh, with image stabilization, you'll be able to uh, reduce the shutter speed and, uh, and then you will get more light into this lens. If it's solely, if it's 100% for wildlife photography, uh, I would tell you to get a 600mm lens. Uh, you will be able to do some better close-ups and get more details and, uh, and enjoy wildlife photography much better. For me, I will stick with this lens and I will stick with taking pictures of dragons in Sydney. Thumbs up if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you very very soon. Bye bye.